Um, is it a catastrophe if I turn off the camera for a second? Yeah.
It might be bad headphones. I'm just shy. I like to sit Cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Wait a second, I've never been So pull up a chair, we have it all ready, and uh, the way that the day is going to run, just so you can think of this in terms of positioning, is that we're going to have uh, three panels with uh, a, a, three conversations, let's call them, and the conversants will initially sit at this table and around, we'll converse over one of the topics for some 40 minutes or so, and then they will return to the larger group, and we will all discuss. We may break us into two, two groups, uh, so we can have a smaller breakout session to continue talking about the same topics and the things that have come up in the conversation to begin with. And then we'll come into the next one, we'll have some people in the middle, and we'll go back out. Basically, it's an in and out type of process. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Well, let's give it a shot. Um, so, let's convene. Uh, my name is Ben Yarl. I am the Artistic Director of Fool's Fury Theatre. Uh, we are the primary organizers of the Fury Factory Festival of Ensemble Theatre, which is going on now through June 25th. Uh, we have 30 companies from around the country performing, so I strongly encourage you all to stay and see the shows over the next two weeks. Uh, but today, we are here to speak about artistic excellence and the problems that we as a field have around speaking about our history excellence. So in a way we're going to be talking about talking about quite a bit. Uh, my co-sponsors for the event, Theatre Bay Area and Network of Ensemble Theatres, uh, first of all, very happy to be working with them on that, as well as Z-Space, who is kind enough to uh, provide us with this wonderful venue. Uh, Brad Erickson from Theatre Bay Area will be arriving after a conference that he's at right now, somewhere else in the city. Brad running around and making everything happen, but many here are here and making everything run right now. So thank you. Uh, Mark Valdez, the what is he, national coordinator for the Network of Ensemble Theaters, is uh, coming up from Los Angeles. Last I heard, was stuck in an airport due to fog delays, uh, as well as Diane Rodriguez, who is one of our panelists for later in the afternoon. But we are confident they will get here in time. So I just wanted to make a couple of notes about artistic excellence, about the why of this convening, and some hopes for what might, uh, what might come out of it. Uh, I, what are we going to talk about today? I didn't want the conversation <coughs> to be entirely
entirely about trying to define what excellence is. That can, that can, we could spend a whole day talking about that, and that's a valuable exercise in itself. Um, but it's not quite what, what we had in mind today. What we want to do is focus on my sense and our sense that the field, as a field, we have some trouble talking about quality. And I personally feel like we want to continue improving the quality of the work that we as a field make. I'm not here to offer a definition of what kind of excellence you should be striving for, or what kind of quality you should be striving for. I have no interest in that. What I'm interested in is us as a field being able to converse constructively and be able to hopefully as a result that improve the working. I think that as a field we are constantly asking we're talking about audiences, we're talking about marketing, we're talking about how we sell more tickets, we're talking about how we do better communication with our communities. And what I very rarely hear us talk about is how good a job are we doing? And how can we do better? I think that we have conversations about plays that we see at the bar after the play, often with people who are friends of ours, and we're very happy then to talk about what a wonderful piece of work just saw, or how much we hated that piece of work that we just saw, tear it apart. Uh, but I, people may disagree, of course. I tend to feel that as a field, we somehow don't have great tools for discussing the work with our fellow artists. And that that conversation, if we can manage to do it better, is one of the key elements towards all of us making better work in whatever way our goal is where our work is, whether that is bringing the community together, whether that is creating a certain piece of art, whether that is exploring a technique or a new idea. Uh, I think it's valuable. And I feel that my friends and colleagues in other fields, not all of them, but many of them, have some better conversations around this. And I think that we have built a good benefit from doing so. Um, I want to well, you may notice that I haven't used the word excellence all that often in this conversation, despite the fact that artistic excellence is the, is the title of the convening. Uh, the reason for that is that I, we sent out some questionnaires to many of the panelists asking, what does artistic excellence mean to you? What are some definitions? What are some examples that you have? And we got uh, an enormous number of wonderful responses, and there is a, you should all have a document that says definitions of excellence. Uh, which is not intended to say this is the definition of excellence, but rather to say, here are some ideas that you can keep in However, one topic that came up several times from several people was the notion that the word excellence in itself is problematic. That it implied a certain elitism, that it implied a certain classism, that it brought up the question of who is it who's making this definition of excellence. And what I want to say today is that I, I guess. We might use the word quality. We might use another word, I don't know. Uh, but I had an experience recently at the Network of Ensemble Theaters gathering in Philadelphia earlier this year, uh, the subject of which was genre-defined work. Very interesting topic. Certainly we had a lot of people there who have made work in different ways and wanted to talk about it. But we spent the entire two-day conference arguing over what the meaning of genre was. <laughs> Which in itself is an interesting and valuable conversation, but very little, I think, actually came out of that conversation that was useful in talking about genre defining work. We talked about what genre meant and different people's opinions of that. And I do think that the question of what is excellent or what is excellence is extremely important, but I don't want us to get caught up for the entire day arguing over what we mean by excellence. I think that on some level we can all agree that. Some work we see is better, and some work we see is not as good. I'm not going to tell you what the definitions of those are. But I guess living in Northern California, I've spent my life here, this notion that it's all good uh, <laughs> isn't very helpful to us uh, as, as theater makers. Because what do we do as artists? What do we do as theater makers? We make choices. And whether we're saying, I'm making this, consciously saying, I'm making this choice because it's better than this choice, that's our job. On some level, what the goals of your work is. I'm not here to tell you about it. Uh, but we make choices. I think we need to acknowledge that, and we need to try and help each other make better choices. That's my hope for the field. That's my hope for the next five hours. Uh, and I think that we should celebrate the qualities when we make them.
good work. We need to be able to celebrate that, and we need to have some way of discussing that with our peers. So, thank you all for being here. Um, it's just amazing to see people who are really engaged with these big questions. And I want to have uh, make sure that we hear everybody's voices today. You have a, a basic schedule of the day in your packets. Uh, I suspect that it's, we're already 15 minutes behind, there you go. Uh, but in order for everybody to get here and get started, that was necessary. So I'm going to try and keep this on a relatively tight schedule. I'll be moderating the first conversation. Brad Erickson from Peter Bay Area will be moderating the second one. And uh, Mark Valdez from NET will be moderating the third one. And we are live streaming. Hello to our national, perhaps international, Quite wonderful. We, uh, we want to thank Arena Stage for helping us set that up and do the live streaming for your plays TV. And many of the shows that appear back here over the next couple of weeks will be live streamed. And we had uh, audiences in Uganda last night. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Okay, so to begin, uh, I'm going to ask our panelists for the first conversation. They are Mark Rucker, Lisa Steinler, Morgan Janess, Rodessa Jones, and Comrade Bishop. Come on up, take a seat at the table. Um,
too reductive and possible to nail down because of controlled standards and controlled by small groups. I think we haven't, um, I don't think we even have, we, we haven't arrived at this place. What is the community becoming? Yeah. I mean, as a, a, as a, a colored woman, I look around there, so there many people of color or colored people here. That was conversation. Uh, when I think about ensemble theater, I think that one of the things that we can work at as a theater community is to be more of an ensemble in the theater community. Uh, just to make sure that we're all here uh, to talk about what happens in the Because it's very hard to, to sort of talk about that. So I remember having a big fight with William Ball many <laughs> years ago from ACT because he, we were in the NEA and he was like, well, you know what excellence is. And I'm like, well, no, you're talking to me now. You're not talking to, you know, um, some one of your comrades or previous. And he just refused to go there. It was kind of, I think it was just kind of scary because, you know, how dare you? Don't you know I'm the ACT? Don't you know? And it was like, yeah, I know all that. But, you know, I want to talk about another like, definition. So it was like, this is about community, about how do we as a community, a, real, a community within San Francisco's community, uh, find a way to have more of us in discussion. You know, uh, the late Stanley Williams was always a kid. You know, I <laughs> Uh, 
Um, but it talks about the difference between the uh, excellence in terms of the aspiration of the artist, mm -hmm. their, you know, their intentionality and their aspiration of something they're going for, which they probably will never really reach. And I think a lot of artists actually do feel that. I actually think that's a good thing, you know, that we try to get as close to it. And then there's the definition that really is more an external one, which is this final product one. It's like, you know, is this so dazzling and so effective that, you know, you go, oh, wow, you know, you're like moved to kind of praise it. So I think those are those two things of the excellence in process and then the excellence in looking at the product and how it, you know, to use a very you know, kind of cynical word about it, but, you know, the final, you know, finished piece and then how it, what the depth charge of it is, how it labels in whatever community that is dropped into it or multiple. Um, so, yeah, the differentiation. But I don't think we, I don't think we avoid that conversation because we have different definitions of excellence. No, I don't so. I think I think you do it as a survival mechanism. I don't want to be consulted. Uh, I've got to tell the foundation of that mechanism. Which is the external thing. And that, like, that becomes very much of a, of a habit that's been destined. I, I, I started thinking about that we were doing a lot of radio. Um, the best interchanges that I was ever part of were roundtable things at conferences that were just listening sessions. People would come in, one of them in 24 hours. People came in that you play 10 minutes of your piece, you would get from around the table, the most committed and for the most part tactful, but blunt and brutal evaluation of, and it started with mostly the, the little technical things. It wasn't so much, uh, I don't think you're having the right to do that sort of thing on the radio. It, it had to do with, uh, you're, you're editing there from this to this, and I can lose me here, and, and so on. It was very, very and those I think are any, any of the actual art form, or many of them are. This is because they were listening to, this is what I'm hearing, and this is what I'm getting. And then you can take it and go with it pretty well. I've never seen that happen really much. And see, when you think you're an inventive side of, the communities have expanded so around that idea of fear. I mean, some of the best work I do, some of the, some of the work that as a, I have a professional artist, I mean, I work with uh, marginal communities for a black and And uh, like as I sit here talking to you, I work, I work with women with HIV. And right now, one of my uh, actors is dealing with neurological stuff, and her daughter called me this morning, and her mom left last night saying she was going to rehearsal, rehearsal. Rehearsal theater becomes the most magical thing in this woman's life. That makes sense. They just found her and brought her home, and I've got to go over there and see about her, and I leave here. And it's like, but this is a community of people that feel very much a part of, of, this, of this theater community. We're, we're, like, we're talking about sitting around and technically being able to say, well, that didn't work, or maybe you want to edit this, cut that. And, uh, and then here I am in a community where I have seen people come out about their HIV status in our talk backs. When I do a piece, and it might be too long. You know, it's like you're sitting there the theater, it's like, oh God, I'm thinking, oh, oh God, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it in the theater, go away. People are just, people are just entranced. I mean, you have this community that does not see themselves as a part of the theater community. All of a sudden, feel like, why well, don't I just say that I've been living with HIV for 25 years? And I want an actual songs I've written about it. And so, and I, my point is back to what you were asking me about. The communities are so vast now, they're so different. I mean, it's like, uh, well, well, I feel like when we're talking, we're, we're talking about Fool's Fury, we're talking about Campo Santo, we're talking about the African American Shakespeare, we're talking about cultural overseas performance music with Peter Zachman and Professor Jones. When, where I live, it, uh, the, the theater community has expanded so much. And uh, I work in Africa. In Africa, I'll do a piece in the prison and they'll put, they'll put buses at the market theater and they will be full. They'll have to go back and get to, they'll have to load up again because everybody wants to come into the, come into the prison and see what kind of theater we're making in the prisons. And so it, uh, it's not just uh, the Negro Auditorium Mall. 
It is like, you know, and the press comes from all over Africa to, to shoot this stuff. And I'm like, oh God, well, this, it is that kind of wrong. But they, the, the artist is so committed and the public is so enthralled and entranced. But it's back to us just being aware that it's theater. The theater is fabulous. So also, we've been educated in it, we've done our work in it. At the same time, it's like, it's very hard for me to talk about uh, excellence because I'm, I'm so exposed to all these different wings and arms of uh, uh, how theater has, has evolved, you know, as a term. I, I love the bizarre art maybe, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking just personally, you know, in terms of when I go to anything <coughs> of what I know, you know, what definition of excellence is. And I think for me it's more about effectiveness. You know, was was the performance of the piece of work, you know, was it effective in the in the context in which it was presented? You know, so you know, there's intentionality. Like I've gone to things, you know, that were way too long and raw and whatever, but there was such a passion there and intentionality and an understanding of the of the conversation with the audience that it was meant for, that it was incredibly effective. And yet if I went through a more standard dramaturgical, you know, kind of, you know, oh, is this a perfect work of art in this standard? I would say no. But in terms of the excellence of the experience, it was incredibly effective. You know, and that gets to aspects of excellence within a production. You know, you can have an excellent or high quality actors on stage, yeah. and not so great a script, or the design elements. There are aspects of that, too. And I, I agree, Morgan, what's the ultimate product at the end is how effective yeah. it how happens. Or it could be an excellent artifact, yeah. but it just sits there on the shelf and you go, oh, wasn't that beautiful and perfect and excellent? And it's like, okay, yeah, and then what? Right. You know, so, I mean... So I think mean, what you're both talking about is the context of where it's, where it's being done, who it's being done for. Mm -hmm. I what think with me, I, I've certainly had experiences where I've done something that I was extremely proud of, but I felt like it was sitting in front of the wrong people. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that really mm -hmm. did not feel yeah. good yeah. to do a new play that I loved in a big regional theater where the audience was not receptive. Yeah. Yes. All that hard work. Yeah. 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 I remember being in La Jolla and uh, La Jolla, California, when I first made Big Bad Girls Hard and Women, which was my solo tour de force. So I was like, I just started with, I was at Sushi. So they invited us to this theater club come and see it, and all these fancy, fancy people from La Jolla, they sat there, they were terrified, it was like language, <laughs> physicality. And then the person actually asked me, he asked me at the Q&A, well, what do you want us to feel about this? Mm -hmm. And it's like, wrong group. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go now. <laughs> but do you think that there's a possibility that the people in that group, somehow it moved them, but they didn't even know what to do with it, which is actually maybe, in a way, a good group. Yeah, well, later, later, when a critic said, well, uh, Jones, is the, Jones writes a lot like David Mamet. You know, it's like just a right. prison, you know, so you cut them and then blah, blah, But, uh, yeah, I guess so, because they, they, they talked to me. They, they were like, just kind of, oh my God, she was a knife, or maybe she has some blow. It was like, this <laughs> thing, but you've been never ever known that I've been in prison. Right. They, were, they were not, you know, that would be the actors, and the actors who came, they were just not fascinated like, why did you do that?
And there are certain kinds of basic standards if you're a director of photography and you have these credits, it's going to look like something. You know? May not be cutting edge, may not be a rock art, but it's still going to have a certain standard, professional standard. And we pay for that if we, if we don't make things better. They are, they do have the capacity for talking to my audience and talking to your audience, both. But that's that. I mean, that's a really interesting point, and I think and anyone can go home and uh, you know, make a film on their computer. They can create a, 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 a musical score. You can do that solo now, technically. You're you're totally right. But that's where I think that what you can't do at home by yourself in a room by yourself is create theater. So there's something on that we have that is possible for anybody on that side of the technical world to do. And you're saying that you don't you don't think that the work, the actual text, is you know, is to par with what's happening up in the film industry. Is that yes. Yeah, it, it isn't that it isn't that being better technically is a guarantee. I mean, I've, I've seen some Absolutely. perfect theatrical productions that are up there, and I might as well be watching television because they. Well, it's our, I, and I, I hear what you're saying, and I agree great. with you. Because I, They're for really me personally, good. theater should be something that's theatrical that you can't do on film. That's my personal view of it. I'm not terribly interested in living in a place that you can film and do on TV because I can do it better. You're right, probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, I am a big proponent of artistic rigor, yeah. and I do think that that is a factor. You know that you know. It, all right, how much time and attention do you? to it, you know, like, is it just something as a first thought, you know, do you really expand, you know, are you willing to be, you know, give your full concentration, it's like love, are you willing to give your full concentration to it, you know, over a period of time through some really bad circumstances, you know, and I think that's palpable, I think there's somehow when an artist does that, you feel it, if you look at a carving, a wood carving, you know, you know someone went, eh, and now if they really were meticulous and whatever, with intentionality, with that concentration, with that time and effort. So I do think that rigor is, is, is definitely part of it. I mean, going back, there's a word you use, the habit, which I was telling someone that um, I work with a wonderful composer songwriter named Gio Wyeth, who has this great little uh, sort of phrase that sort of the purpose of art, but also the purpose of theater, which he, he swears he stole from the Russian formalist, but I think he just says it better. And it's quite simple. It says the purpose of, of theater is to interrupt habit, which I love. It's so simple, but it's like excellence is something that makes you go, that interrupts the habit of how you look at the people, how your assumptions about yourself, the world, the nature of artistic experience, what's theatrical, whatever habit is, politics, you know, if you could go and, and in, in the Wings of Desire, too, the, the Avengers film is a wonderful Peter Hampton script, speaking of the great things, right? Uh, when the two angels, I don't know if you see it, but the two angels, you know, are sitting in Otto's showroom, and, and Bruno Gans is trying to explain to Otto Sanders why he wants to be human. He says, a beautiful thing about it. Coffee and all that, but then when he does it, then he says, Don't you want to be able to go, Ooh, oh, oh, and I thought that's that interruption where you kind of go, Oh, and whatever it takes to interrupt you, that to me seems part of this discussion. And I think it's difficult to have a discussion because we live in a society which actually wants us to maintain habit mm -hmm. a lot. That is absolutely lovely. I, I, I want to just sort of steer towards, towards the end of that point, which is, again, about what, where are the obstacles towards the conversation? And I think that, that, that we live in a society that sort of wants us to say, stay in that same mode, and maybe instead of flow, I think it's, it's certainly one very poignant example of it. If we had, we had, you know, you're making your work at the at the wrong time or for the wrong audience. Uh, you mentioned the financial problem that we're always struggling just to make enough work to stay above water, and that's sort of that that am I looking at my life from 10 feet or am I looking at it from 60,000 feet? Sort of thing. 
you're always stuck dealing with what's urgent. It's very hard to ever pull back and look at what's important. Kind of so, so those are some of the things that I'm hearing here. Uh, questions of what's appropriate for what community. And so having the conversation in one way, which isn't actually useful for the person with whom you might be conversing, uh, you know, having a vocabulary around that in both you sounds, sounds very important. Uh, I'm wondering if there are some other things that come to mind for impediments to the, to the conversation that you might have about the Well, when you speak of rigor, I, 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 as I said, I feel you. But then, as, and then as a director, if I'm working with my large community group, I am like, I, I learn a lot about well, how do I get the best performance that looking through an artist's eyes and listening to people when that kind of asking to tell the stories. But I think about the wretches, I love um, uh, uh, Miss Greco uh, at the Magic, the thing that when I saw El Rey, uh, El, El, uh, Oedipus El Rey, it was just, you know, and everything I've seen that she's done. Uh, and of course, uh, Campo Santo, when I go there and it's uh, seeing John West piece, and thinking as a director of things, then I can be, then maybe I can talk about everything. But, but again, it's back to the community, it's so vast and it keeps expanding and, and flowing in. It's like the, in different areas, rigor really makes sense to me and craft. But if we're going to have everybody, if, if, if I feel like the people are, if the community, if there's all these communities that are going to be invited in, how do we then discuss the excellence? Is, um, well, not the quality. I would argue that you do apply rigor to the community. Oh, so it's a different, different right? Yeah, you know, know, within the circumstances. Because if you get those people coming in, if you get them to, to explore things, if you get them to interrupt the habit of how they see themselves and mm -hmm. you know, you are a part of rigor. And it's a different, you know, it is within the context. You know, someone coming in might go, well, I have all these standards. I think the other impediment is that there is a small group you know, saying that the society that does not want to give up the control of the standards and define the standardizations of experts, you know, they're not going to give up that control. It's like, really, we're still reading the New York Times? It's like, you know, every, you know, every so season, every season, you know, <laughs> some of you may have had this call from me. I call up and I say, hello, are we going to talk about plays, or should I just renew your subscription to the New York Times? You know?
theater makers of this country, of this world, and that she has proven herself in many ways um, and helps the field and provide the field with so much high quality, excellent work um, that she now is a trusted person to go to and say, what do you think? And I trust everything she can see. Well, I hope you don't. <laughs>
that a lot of people have resistance to stop myself. You don't want to offend anybody because these are the people you want to work with, or these are the people that you're hoping are going to hire you, or that you might be <laughs> collaborating. Um, and, I, and, and also, I think since we are in an ensemble festival and in an in a ensemble discussions as well, I think in the ensemble theater world and in the Northern California world, it's particularly, you know, we want to make everybody happy. Like everyone, I don't know. I think that's kind of a problem too. Sometimes, how, does it, how do we deal with that? It's a new thing. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm 62 years old. It's like, a, and I feel like I don't serve, I don't service you if I if I'm so worried about. You know, because I think that in the end, you know, I think when you grab an ear, you know, we know each other. You got to hear from me what I really think. Again, it's like, how do you place the words? You don't have to go, you don't have to head from the gut all the time. But it's like, I think that we got to start practicing being honest and kind and to each other. You know, and um, the people who are going to survive, the cream will rise to the top, and the rest of them. Yeah, I'm not just <laughs> No, I, I, I know what you're saying, but I think it's a new day. I, I'm too old now to worry about it. not like me if I tell you the truth. Well, it's great for you, but what about for the, for the people? Well, maybe I'm
built something and that had the time where keeps it from really being like excellent or great. It's almost you play a game of Jenga or a Jenga or really you play a, a, a game of Jenga with your work. But you did all this stuff to you know to build it, but then what can you take away, you know, and it still stands because that's where the audience enters in. It's like it's Picasso drawings, you know, where he just draws the back of a woman, but you know her knee, you know, her elbows on her knee because he's drawn it with a full knowledge of it, but he leaves room for you to complete the, the drawing, which of course I think is like, you know, like an excellent work. But it's like, where is, how do you get rid of obstacles to something? And I think in that case, you know, you say, I agree with you, it's like, this piece is a movement. You know, like, uh, we're in San Francisco, so I have to approach on the piece. You know, and he talks this wonderful place, Shimmer, yes, which yes, I love. Yes. You know, yeah. and that concept that everybody has a shimmer, uh, uh, and that you know, have a shimmer. And there's also movement to it, whether it's up or down or sideways or in any direction. And what gets in the way of that movement, either inside a piece that you're constructing or your movement in the world? So we say, yeah, you're not right for here, but maybe. And I get into trouble with this because people say, I have a piece that's going to go to Broadway, and I go, well, actually, no, maybe it's moving. University. And now, you know, if that's not significant to you, you don't think that keeping it moving rather than having it stuck on its route to Broadway is not good enough for you, well, then let's look it up. Part of what you're talking about is, is what, I mean, talking to somebody else about the work is not that much different than talking to an actor and director. Um, you, you, you can tell them how it sounds, you know, but that's one thing that helps do that. Um, and, and in that kind of circumstance, the best director is the wife. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this thing in process of the wife and trying to get lost in this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I find it very, I find it happy to really sit on myself if I start to talk to them about somebody, to somebody about a piece of work, unless it's a piece of work that I would like to be part of. Now that's dangerous because it's mean, well, I'm telling you what I would like to do with it, but you know, we have to think about that. Uh, this is what it feels to me like it wants to be. This is what I love, what I'd like to see. I would this way in there, probably. If they accept it. If they don't, shut up. One of the things that I think is really interesting because uh, being here and there, newly ish to the Bay Area, is finding ways to connect to other theater makers. And I think for a long time, maybe we felt disconnected. But I, I find the more that we make an effort to talk to each other and we get to see together. And things like last year we had a uh, conversation with about the Terrell McClain's other sister plays that, that actually created a, a trilogy that happened in those three theaters. And so it was part of that conversation. So it was almost a fourth production. And so it was a, a time in which we all said, we all love this thing. How can we make it happen together rather than? Oh no, I want them all. We're gonna steal, we're gonna steal all of this thing and do it here. But why not create a group, a group thing that, that spoke to a lot more people? And also connected uh, a bunch of theater makers that were separated from the world. Yeah, which is why Rejects is so important to me, you know, in terms of making sure that we really, you know, have that that reach, you know, as expensive. On the note of expansive and conclusive, or inclusive, we're going to be conclusive. Uh, we're going to wrap up this conversation. Thank you guys all very much. Um,